So next to the computer is a black box and we want to go to the back side of this box and there is a power switch right here that we just turn on. See the pretty green light? Now we're ready to open up the computer template. So the equipment we're going to need for this experiment are some circuit components, either this one or something like these. Uh, we're going to need a, a small banana I like to call these banana cables because they have this little squishy part right here um, that allows them to slide into binding posts and have a nice snug fit. And we also need two uh, longer ones. It's preferable to have one red and one black. So we're going to plug the red into the signal. So that's a picture of a signal generator, a waveform. So we just put that in there and gently slide it in. You don't have to apply a lot of pressure. And then we're going to then we're going to take the black cable and plug it into the ground. That's a symbol for ground. Okay? And we just push that in there gently. Don't push hard. While you're plugging these in, you'll want to note that the output has plus or minus 5 volt potential capability and maximum of 300 milliamps. Okay? So this is not going to hurt you. To do this experiment, we want to download the template from the website or we can go into class support and find lab 2 so we're in class support lab 2 and then inside there we have ohm's law and here's the ohm's law template but remember we don't want to open this until after we've turned on the science workshop interface that allows the software to do a handshake if you will with the interface and so ohm's law opens up and there's a workbook here we've created that for you and down here there is a um, page turner okay and so we can just go through all the pages and see what's available in this experiment and it looks like there are 10, 10 pages in this experiment and each page has a title that matches the instructions in your lab manual so it's very important to follow the procedure that goes along with the current page that just that is displayed so we're going to take the other end of our leads, the red and the black, and we're going to hook them across the first resistor, a 10 ohm resistor. So find a 10 ohm resistor, hook those banana plugs into the binding post across the 10 ohm resistor. So this first resistor is the 10 ohm resistor. So next I'd like to draw your attention to the signal generator window, um, which looks like this, okay, the signal generator window and that's going to create the the AC waveform that's going to go be put across the voltage pattern that's going to be put across that resistor up here in the upper left of the screen you'll you'll see a um, a start button and if I did not have an interface connected that start button would be gray and you'll have to call your instructor over to fix that um, but if you're at home and you're just analyzing data, you won't be able to collect data, of course. So I can just click Start since I'm all set up and we can find out what happens. And we're just looking now at a plot of voltage versus time on the top plot and current versus time. And what we see here is a triangle wave. And we're controlling that triangle wave in the signal generator window. And it says amplitude of 1 volt. And so I'll see it goes up to 1 volt here, positive and down to negative 1 volt. Um, and then a frequency of 0.25 hertz. And that means that this is going to cycle um, 0.25, a quarter cycle every second. If we go to page 3, it says three resistors, voltage and current. And so there's a procedure in the lab manual. There's instructions for you to follow to collect this data. What I'm going to do right now is go through all the data very quickly, showing you how to set up the circuit, showing you how to set up the circuit and collecting the data very quickly. So for this first one, we just leave it connected to the 10 ohm resistor as we had for um, the previous page looking at the triangle wave. On this page, we're plotting voltage versus current. And so that plot is already made for us. And we want to make sure we study the axes. And then we just click Start. For the second resistor, all we're going to do is move this input to the 33 ohm resistor. 
So now we're looking at the 33 ohm resistor. And we click start. You'll go back and analyze all this following the steps in the lab manual, but I kind of like to collect all the data at once. And lastly, we're going to look at the 100 ohm to complete the three resistors. Three resistors and we have all the data. So let's go to page four, resistors in series and parallel. I'm going to do the 10 and the 33 ohm in series. And so just think about the current flow. Follow the current from here to here by going through the 10 ohm and then through the 33 ohm. <clears throat> and click start. And again, we'll have another video talking about these series in parallel. To do this in parallel, I'm going to put my other connector up here, and then I'm going to use the short, the short jumper cable between these two. Parallel circuit looks like this. And I click start. What do you think is going to happen with the resistance? While we're here, uh, let's before we move on, let's go ahead and click on the data menu and bring in one of the runs. And oh, by the way, this is a good time to think about naming your runs. In the far left of your screen is the data summary window. And in there, we see different runs. And so I can name 20, 24 just by double clicking and this window pops up and I can rename it and we'll call this one what? We'll call this one the 10 ohm resistor. And just click yes when it asks you that question, do you want to rename everything? And so name each of these runs. And you can also delay click and just type right there. You can also delay click. So if I click on a run and then wait and then click one more time, I can just edit the name right there. So the next one was the 33 ohm. Boy, I don't even know what I'm typing. 33 ohm. Oh, hit, hit return and then delay click and 100 ohm. So you want to rename each of your runs right after you collect that data. And we'll call this one series 10 and 33. Okay, so name each of the runs immediately after you've taken each data set. While we're here, I recommend that you click on the plot. And on this plot with the series and the parallel, I'd like you to bring in the 10 ohm and the 33 ohm, just so that you can have them on the same plot for the sake of comparison. Save your file to the desktop and save often. Now is a good time for this. Then we go to page five, the coil and the capacitor. For collecting data for the coil, we're just gonna put the probes across the coil. So collect data when it's connected to the coil. On the same page, we want to look at the capacitor. And so this would be for the 100 microfarad. And this would be for the 330 microfarad. So we just connect it there and click Start. And connect it here and click Start. And again, we'll have a movie specifically discussing the capacitor. Do you remember back to the theory? What did it mean when we had a vertical line for Ohm's law? Next is the diode. And the diode is this little kind of white painted light bulb. And in series with the diode is a resistor. You never want to connect a diode without a resistor because you will blow up the diode most likely. So to connect for the diode, we just simply put it across the connections for the diode. And it says we're going to run it at two voltages. And remember, you, you should be naming all these runs as you go. So by two voltages, we're actually going to control the, the, the signal generator window, the amplitude. So we just hit start for the diode, and we see that not much happens. It just looks like a horizontal line. But if you're being careful, you'll notice that the axes have changed. Here we have current on the vertical axis versus voltage on the x-axis. So why do you think we made that change? We'll talk about that in the other video. And then we want to change the voltage um, to some other value. So I'm just going to go up to, I forget what the lab manual says, and I'm just doing this quickly. So we'll go up to 4 volts and then hit Start. The plot has this little tool up here, which is Scale to Fit. 
And so that'll scale the graph nicely for us. And oh, now we've got something interesting. And while you're taking this data, you want to take note. And by the way, this is at the higher, higher amplitude voltage. If I hit start, I want you to watch that LED. Okay, the first color we see is red, and then we see green, and then red again. And that's what the plot looks like. Hmm. And finally is the light bulb. So we hook up the light bulb. Okay, it's right next to the diode. And again, I'd like you to watch the light bulb as the plot is being created. And we're on the light bulb page. Is that what you expected? On this next page, uh, light bulb resistance versus time, we can simply just bring in data from a previous run. And I haven't named my runs yet, I apologize, but the light bulb was this last one. So I can just bring in the light bulb on each of these graphs using the data menu, clicking the graph and then bring in the data. And then I like to bring in the, um, the 10 ohm as a comparison. Okay, so I can kind of see how a resistor looks compared to the light bulb. For this almost last page, we're going to look at the light bulb again, um, but this time the frequencies. We're going to vary the AC frequency and see what happens. To vary the AC frequency, we're going to use the signal generator window and affect the frequency right here. And the lab manual tells you what kind of frequencies to try. And for each one, just hit star to make sure you're watching the light bulb as you collect data. And then you can just type in new frequencies. So I'm going to type in four. You'll want to follow the lab manual and see what it looks like. Oh, and by the way, there's a note in the lab manual that it's a good idea for the light bulb at this point to turn off the auto feature and then you can simply turn on the light bulb whenever you want it to be flashing and then turn it off when you're done and it's probably a good idea to maximize the voltage here to 5 volts that'll make the light bulb bright enough to see at, at, various, at various frequencies so now you're going to change the frequency um, following the lab manual and record a new run, you'll end up having a number of runs on this graph. And then finally there's a page for you to discuss the light bulb. I hope you found the light bulb rather interesting and I'd like you to highlight different things that you learned a lot about the light bulb here. And think in terms of Ohm's law. Back on page three of the workbook are the three resistors. Find your lab manual about the resistors and start there for all the analysis now. Have fun!